This is Larry Jordan, the host of the Digital Production Buzz. The following interview is an excerpt from a recent program. To hear the entire program, visit digitalproductionbuzz.com. Larry O'Connor founded Otherworld Computing, which is also called OWC, in 1988. Their website, which you may know better than their company name, is maxsales.com. OWC is both a reseller and a developer supporting all things Mac for more than 25 years. And today we want to talk with Larry about storage. Hello, Larry. Welcome back. Hey, Larry. Uh, thanks for having me back. Appreciate it. Oh, it's always fun having you on the show. Mike has been looking forward to this conversation because he lives for storage. Yeah, I, I do, Larry. I'm going uh, to be listening intently. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, many people know OWC from its website at maxsales.com. What they may not know is that you both sell and develop hardware. What got you into creating your own gear in the first place? Well, you know, we're very, uh, you know, the, the, the direct uh, channel is, you know, really reflective of being a very customer focused organization and being there for our customers first. And in terms of the products that, that we've brought to market, which go back to the, uh, the early 90s, I guess you could technically count memory in the 80s, but memory are just chips. You know, the first storage solutions were in the 90s. It was reflective of a lack of, you know, whether it was a feature, you know, a, a quality situation, you know, the, the right solution being available for customers that we were talking to, and that we had the ability to do something better and bring it into uh, bring it into place is how we you know, got going and, and, and got into position. Today, because I know that OWC makes all kinds of stuff, I want to focus specifically on storage. And while all of us want the fastest gear, like we all want the fastest car, when does speed, when does storage performance really matter, and when is it less important? Yeah, it really matters where it's performance that actually applies to the task that's at hand. You know, benchmarks are wonderful, and benchmarks, uh, granted, you know, the, like the odds on the black magic tests are very relevant to those sorts of you know, application functions. But speed, just for the sake of speed and the synthetic, you know, really doesn't translate often into the actual applications where you're doing the audio, video, editing work. You know, it's, it's a benchmark, it's a nice number, but in the real world where there's mixed load, where there's reading and writing happening effectively simultaneously, you know, things are a very, a very different beast. And of course, the other uh, place where I say uh, speed is is great, but not necessarily the only primary, is you know, where the data that's being generated, the data that's being created, stored, you know, output, you know, has a value that exceeds that of a, a couple milliseconds saved because you have faster stores. And that's where you do give up speed to have, a, say, a RAID five or even a mirror or a zero plus one as opposed to a pure stripe. Now, there's two types, broad types, of storage systems. There's single drives and there's RAIDs. How would you define a RAID? By definition, a redundant of inexpensive drives is a redundant array of inexpensive drives was the original definition of a RAID. I mean, way back when, you know, put a bunch of drives together and get more speed versus an expensive drive that was faster, and things are much, much different today. And I don't even know why I went to the historical, but a RAID effectively allows you to combine multiple drives. You want drives that are matched, typically going together, and that's where you get the best performance and the best reliability. You can leverage multiple drives together and have well, the, the speed of the combined set as opposed to a single drive, which is great for archive, great for a lot of things. In fact, you're editing and work on a single drive as well, but you, know, you, you have less performance from a single drive than a multi-drive array. You have less, well, you have actually no redundancy off a single drive. You know, versus uh, having a RAID, you know, whether it's a RAID 0 plus 1 or a RAID 1 or a RAID 4 or a RAID 5 you know, with a, uh, a RAID array. Well, just to define a term, redundancy means that in some RAID configurations, if one of the drives inside the RAID dies, you can still recover all your data. So having redundancy allows you to protect data in the event of a drive failure. But you also used terms like RAID 0 or RAID 1 or RAID 5. What do those numbers mean? Sure. I guess we RAID zero in the sense that I mean, having RAID in the name is almost oxymoron in the sense that RAID zero is, you know, there's zero redundancy and they RAID zero. All the uh, drives in that RAID are working together to give you the, you know, full, the total capacity of the drives and the maximum performance of the combined throughput. If one drive goes down in a 
Raid zero, everything stored in that set goes away. Raid one gives you effectively, you know, I'd say complete redundancy, but not really any benefit for raid performance. The raid one with the right solution, software is one of the solutions you get a good boost on the read side, but when you're writing, you're writing out the same data to both drives. So it's limited to the performance of a single drive, similar to a, a single you know, standalone drive solution, other than if one of those two drives has an issue, you don't suffer data loss. You're still online, you're still working, your priceless data is still available. Rate four and five go into uh, a, a, effectively a, a, rate, a, a redundant or a, re, a redundant rate zero in a sense. You, know, you have, in the case of a rate four, you have a dedicated parity drive which means that there's one drive that, that takes slices of the other three drives. In a RAID 5, you have distributed parity, which means all the drives take slices of the other drives. You know, in the past, a RAID 5 was actually a better solution than a RAID 4 due to just where drive capabilities were. But in the era of SSDs and even some of today's, a lot of today's high-performance hard drives, you actually get a better performance from the uh, RAID 4 solution. Just because RAID 5 is a number higher doesn't make it a, a higher RAID. And, and again, don't want to overcomplicate, but other than to say, distributed parity was better when drives weren't as fast as they are today because you needed that load spread. Now it's actually a, a better circumstance to have a RAID 4. The system can manage it quicker, faster, more efficiently. And the perform you have the same redundancy and you have a little bit better performance, but you get the performance of combining multiple drives together, but you're in a circumstance where one of the drives can fail. And once again, you have no data loss, no loss of time, no loss of operation. That's the way a RAID is supposed to work. Not all RAIDs work that way. Some are proprietary and use special schemas that you know, let you do things that sound really great on paper, but don't always work really well in practice. And when they do have a problem, they can be a big problem. But nonetheless, the, these types of RAIDs are no, definitely the right way to go. The RAID zero, I'm no, sorry, the RAID four or five, you know, one types. So RAID zero gives us the fastest performance, the greatest storage, but RAID four or RAID five gives us the protection in case a drive dies. Briefly, when would we use an SSD in a RAID versus spinning media? You know, it all depends upon what your performance needs are, or even your environment needs. Some people. You know, go all SSD because they want silent running and they get exceptional performance, more performance than they need in a lot of cases. You know, and at a higher cost, but it's dead silent. So if you're, if you have an application that benefits from the speed, you know, it's editing, it's maybe it's ingest and you have a, a high performance uh, station for what you're ingesting from and you can use more than what spinners can do. You know, an array of SSDs is, is a nice, Solution, but you can typically uh, out of you know, RAID zero you know, achieve you know, over 800 megabytes a second, certainly over 700 megabytes a second with spinning platter drives. You know, RAID five, you know, in the the 500, 600 megabyte range. So it really comes down to if that's if it isn't fast enough for you, you can either well, and that's the other thing you can, you know, especially with something like soft RAID, you can you can expand the array and double that performance simply by going out to a second a second chassis and adding more drives. And with more drives comes more speed. But it, 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 again, it's all about what your application requirements are, you know, what your budget is as well. I mean, if the sky is the limit, you buy SSDs because they're quiet and they're exceptionally fast and it just doesn't get better than that. If you're, you, know, you need a lot of storage and you, know, you have X performance benchmark you need to hit, you know, an array of spinners is far more still cost effective today and gives you a lot more storage uh, you know, for a much lower, again, a much lower, more cost-effective price. One of Some the, people do both. One of the hidden components in any RAID is what's called the RAID controller. And there are hardware RAID controllers, and there are software RAID controllers. What's Hardware is a chip that handles all the data processing, and the software RAID controller does it using software inside your computer. Traditionally, hardware RAIDs were faster, and software RAIDs were more flexible. Is that a true statement? And when should somebody decide whether to accept a hardware RAID or a software RAID? Well, today the lines are pretty have gotten pretty blurred. You know, in terms of you know, you have other bandwidth constraints, you have other things that impact. You know, what a hardware RAID can do. You're also reaching thresholds in terms of what the uh, the hardware processors are providing today. But the big thing is the flexibility you get with a software RAID 
is uh, on a Mac. Again, it, 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 all your, your mileage will vary depending on what platform. There's only one major, how to say, uh, soft RAID solution for beyond RAID, uh, RAID 1, at least on a Macintosh. But in the case of a soft RAID, not only do you have the, the performance at this point that's comparable to something that's plugged in hardware, you also have, and not only do you have the flexibility to have multiple RAIDs on a single device, you know, a hardware RAID is limited to one hardware mode across the entire set of volumes. So if you have multiple purposes in mind, you know, you're limited to you know, whatever single RAID mode you put across. You need performance, it's all got to be RAID 0. If you need redundancy, you know, it could be 0 plus 1 or, or, or RAID 5 or RAID 4. You know, in the case of a software RAID, you could actually set aside part of the volume. In fact, the fastest part of the, the spinners, you know, the, the software typically will allow you to configure for a RAID 0 set, put a RAID 5 set or a, zero plus, a, a double redundant 0 plus 1 set, you know, below that, you can do your editing in the fast portion of the drive in array zero, and then put your output into a redundant, a redundant volume that's on the same set of drives. So you have exceptional flexibility. If you need more speed and something you can absolutely not do the hardware rate, you can take, uh, you can have actually multiple uh, drive arrays connected to your system or chain them through Thunderbolt. And instead of having four drives, you can take it to eight drives or to 12 drives or to 16 drives. You can put it across two separate Thunderbolt channels if you have more than one Thunderbolt channel available to you and double your available bandwidth and you can see speeds, you know, even approaching literally four gigabytes a second. The only way to rate a hardware rate is to use is to use software rate on the hardware, which is you know exceptionally convoluted versus having a true rate set. And the other big thing is when something goes wrong with a hardware rate, data recovery can be a real pain in the tail. And it's, you know, there's definitely, uh, there's more that can be done and is being done in, at a software rate level to protect and prevent issue and prevent even, you know, when a drive fails, you know, the whole point of the rate is so that, you know, you're up and running, you're still going, your data is accessible. And I had to say it's, unfortunately, more often it should be that, you know, that is not the case when something goes wrong, you know, especially proprietary solutions. On the, uh, the, on the hardware rate side. And you know, he, he filmed my friend in, the, how to say, the, in your biz, you know, certainly unfortunately had a, an experience that could have been, could have ended very, you know, very badly. And thankfully, you know, they were able to uh, recover her data, but you know, the, the whole situation should never have occurred if that product had done what was intended. You, know, you have, with a software rate, you have so much more information, a different level. I mean, there's not a, the software rate is there to make sure whatever you're connected with, uh, it's monitoring those drives and giving you and it, keeping you informed and giving you the best you know, probability of knowing an issue exists before it's an issue, and and, and giving you the opportunity to resolve at a hardware rate. You know, it, it, it's a little you're more isolated and you're a little bit more you know, kind of at the uh, at the whim of you know, what's behind the black curtain. Larry, I know that that most of the raids, if not all the raids that OWC ships, are software raid based. Where can people go on the web to learn more about the software raid solution you guys offer and and how well it works? Sure, they can uh, visit uh, OWCDigital.com and uh, get a lot of information on the Thunder Bay Four uh, software raid enabled uh, solutions. And I'd also encourage uh, folks to uh, directly visit SoftRaid.com, where they can learn a lot more about that application and. Yeah, we benefit from it, I and mean, again, it's what powers you know, our raids, uh, that's our, our multi-bay uh, raids today, and you know, it's also something that's an option for anybody. Uh, you can actually, you know, even with a hardware raid, you can go into a, you can use this solution as most raids allow you to go independent. You can break the, the, the binds of that hardware and... And you know, Larry, again, Larry, raids. we're going to... we're gonna. Thank you so much. Larry O'Connor is the founder of OWC. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Larry. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. To stay connected and receive updates from The Buzz, sign up for our free weekly newsletter now. Or you can learn more about us on our website. And thanks for watching The Digital Production Buzz.